and birds get hustlers, rims and wheels, we burning them. Got the dust sticky, it get hot, burning them. Freak bitch going down like Hennet, burning them. Built from the ground up, ask Scotty Vance, black and rhyme them. Put a bounce in the city, cause it's hard in the city. Give a nigga a little something, believe it, introduce it to them. What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. I'm going to be reviewing a scent today from the house of Bod number nine. And this is actually the fourth scent I'm reviewing from this house. It's one of my favorite niche houses. I like that you can get the scents discounted. I like the fact that it is indeed New York inspired. And I like the fact that there's such a wide array of fragrances in the library. And this is really one of those houses where there's something for everyone, really at all price points. You know, if you're okay with testers, you can get bottles from their I Love New York series for somewhere around 70 bucks on sites like FragranceNet. The scent we're reviewing today is called Andy Warhol Selver Factory and the main reason that I wanted this one is because it's got some really high praise from people within Freycom, uh, people that I trust and most of the Bond scents that I own really aren't darker scents. You know New Harlem is in the summer scent but it's also not very dark and daring so in terms of their general release releases and not the Ouds or the Harrods exclusives some people think this is one of their best sort of winter scents and I wanted to give that a test. Now if you'd like to know more about the history of the Bond house, please do check out the video that I did at New Harlem a few years back when I went through the house history. <clears throat> This one is called Andy Warhol Silver Factory. And it's from the Andy Warhol collection that Bond did some years back. Warhol was of course an artist who made a huge contribution to, to the world of art and pop culture, more specifically New York art. So Bond wanted to honor his legacy with a fragrance collection and they did six fragrances starting back in 2007. And I guess pretty recently the licensing they had uh, with the, with the um, Warhol name expired and Bond discontinued some of their Warhol fragrances and simply renamed others. In 1963, Andy Warhol opened a place called The Factory in his Manhattan studio on 24th Street and what he did is he covered the walls in the silver tin foil, tinsel, and silver paint. He put silver balloons and broken mirror shards all over the place and this was sort of his debauchery palace. That time in Warhol's history was known as the Silver Era. He would have all kinds of famous musicians and actors and artists over and they would do God knows what, but I think a lot of drugs, sex, and alcohol was involved. The factory was open until 1968 and then he transferred it to a loft on Union Square West and basically Bond's goal was to make a scent to commemorate uh, that era and the actual silver factory. Warhol was also a huge fan of fragrance. One said another way to take up more space is to wear perfume and I really love wearing perfume. He asked to be buried with a bottle of the fragrance beautiful in his coffin. So the perfumer enlisted to commemorate this piece of the Warhol era was Orlain Gouchard. Gouchard has a pretty impressive resume. Um, he also did Chinatown for Bond. He did Comme des Garçons Play. He did Champion for Davidoff, which is a fragrance I really like. He did Loud for Hilfiger. Um, the Pretty classic, unforgivable for Sean John, even if it is a Millicene ripoff. He did uh, Eros for Versace, which I like, and many more scents for many different houses. This one was a 2007 release, and the notes on it are lavender, bergamot, and lemon at the top, jasmine, iris, violet, incense, and in the base, you get amber, cedar, and resins. Um, there's also a metal accord in this scent. Now, as far as pricing goes, guys, I got this 100 ml tester on FragranceNet for $116. And you can sometimes find the scent, discount it. If you cannot, don't worry because Bond still sells the exact same scent. It is just now called Bond Number no. 9 Silver. And a 50 ml of it, brand new, is 160 and a 100 ml is 285. As far as your presentation goes, obviously I don't have the box or the cap, but you could see Bond Number no. 9 Perfume Concentrate. Andy Warhol NYC Silver Factory. On the bottom you've got the sticker. It does indeed say Eau de Parfum and you have the badge code. Now uh, Warhol students are going to know right away that this is the colors of his iconic soup, Campbell soup can um, painting. It sort of has the same exact colors, the purple, the teal, uh, the yellow, and the silver. So I think to me, and the outline of the bottle, as you guys can see, is silver. It does have the typical pre-core Bond number 9 sprayer. 
Um, it's not horrible. I just wish they would do something a little bit better with the sprayer. So it has that Warhol uh, Campbell soup colors. And then in the bottom, you guys see it has NYC and the Bond token uh, script. So I think, honestly, it's probably, at least in my collection, the, my favorite uh, Bond bottle. I just think the colors really pop and it's really, really beautiful. And what is this fragrance about? Well, guys, it's a really punching incense fragrance. There's no mistaking what this fragrance is about. So put to bed everything else because the main player here is a very rich and gorgeous frankincense note with just a dab of sweetness from amber. Basically, it opens up with a smidgen of citrus and lavender, but neither of these notes really have a chance at all of standing up to the incense. Um, what's interesting is that the metallic accord mentioned really is there. You can sort of smell almost like the scent of cold metal, like there's an incense stick um, in like a metal incense holder. To me, the florals in this are non-existent. I don't get any of them. Uh, what I do get is some cedar in the base when the scent starts to dry down. But what you really need to know about this, boys and girls, is that you're getting a hardcore incense fragrance with slight citrus and lavender, a metal accord, and a little bit of cedar and amber. So how do all those notes work? Well, Bond calls this a smooth scent, and usually incense scents in my uh, experience aren't smooth. But what I have to say about this one is that it is really smooth. Out of the bottle, it's a bit like a bowl in a china shop. The incense is so pungent that it almost seems like there's either something uh, on fire or animalic in the composition. But as it matures on the skin, it starts to find its legs and it becomes very toned down um, or as toned down as an incense fragrance can become. Performance wise, you'd think the way that I describe this, this would be downright dangerous, but really, um, well, it is loud and scary out of the sprayer. Give it some time and you've got something very wearable and something that isn't gonna get you sent home from work, though I wouldn't advise you to wear this one to work. Performance is good. Um, I'd say eight eight hours about, and decent projection for about five or six, and then it becomes more of a skin scent, and the cedar and amber become more evident. Uh, definitely unisex juiced. Most fragrances by Bond are, and this is cold weather juice. I would not try this in the, try this in the summer. Um, I don't even think I'd attempt to wear this in the spring. I think this is night out scent when you can sort of compete with other people's fragrance. I don't think incense at work is a great idea and I don't think it's a great idea for a date unless you know the person that you're going out with is an incense fan. If you didn't want to pay the money for this fragrance or you're looking for something comparable, I can recommend a few fragrances to you. Um, first, the incense fragrance under $50 that I always recommend is Incense by Smell Bent. It's a beautiful church incense with vanilla soaked woods. Um, at the $100 price point, you can of course access any of the Comme de Garçon incense series scents. And if you're okay with a little bit more money, you could do Full Incense by Montal or one of, one of the many um, fragrances by Amouage, including Memoir Man or Interlude. For my money, guys, Amouage, um, who is partially based in, in Oman, has the best incense in their scents. It's amazingly smooth and narcotic. There's also a scent by Mabusson called Generation M, and that's sort of um, a really nice incense fragrance as well. This is what the bottle looks like. It's sort of a cinnamon and incense fragrance, and it costs about $22, and it's also a great um, incense fragrance. It actually reminds me quite a bit of this, although the incense is stronger um, and sort of pure in this. This one, there's some cinnamon, and it's almost like a gourmand incense. So this one is just like real hardcore incense. But if you're in that $20 range, you can take a look at Generation M. I think someone trying to talk you into buying this scent would say that, you know, this scent has won awards, which is true. They'd probably tell you that you're buying a fragrance from one of the best niche houses in the world. And if you get the Warhol bottle, you might have something collectible down the road. Um, they'd also probably tell you that you're getting a smooth and refined incense scent, which can be hard to pull off. Now, on the flip side, if someone was trying to dissuade you from buying this, I think they'd say that you're overpaying for the bot name and the options I mentioned before are just better options. And if you're going to spend $200 plus, you should get yourself something from Amouage. I kind of fall into the middle. Um, I don't think this is a unique scent, but I think it's a very good scent. You know, this was a blind buy for me, and I've got to be honest, I'm kind of let down by it. 
Um, as I said, it does remind me a lot of Generation M, which I reviewed in the past. And Generation M is 20 bucks, and I think it's just as smooth. So this one seems pretty, pretty spicy. Although I did mention that one's more sweet, this one's drier and woodier, so they're not identical. Um, as far as rating goes, this one is a five and a half out of ten for me for a couple reasons. Firstly, as an incense fragrance, it's okay, but I've smelled better for a lot less money. Um, I don't find it to be a completely original composition, and it's not a beast of a performer, and it should be at this price point. And also, let's be honest, guys, a lot of the bonds at retail are a joke. Um, same as Creed's at retail. There are some bonds that are actually okay buys at their retail uh, price points, but those are few and far between. So in its essence, what you have here is a nice and basic incense scent that underperforms and is overpriced. Will I wear it? Yes. Was it as, was it a good buy for me? Um, as a collector, yes. As someone who already owns some incense fragrances, no. It wasn't a great buy for me at all. If I could have it back, I probably would have gone for a different Bond scent, maybe New York Amber or New York Oud. Um, but c'est la vie, you know, it is what it is, and I'm happy to have this in my collection. So there you go, guys. There's my review of Bond Number no. 9 Silver Factory. We'll be back next week with another review. I hope you have enjoyed this one. Please email me with any questions. I'm Maximilian. Oh, Getting loud on a nigga, how you proud? Look around you. Aggression, depression, addiction, recession, deception. Go and get your lesson. I'm just going to pay the price, get on the floor.